I took up a new hobby during the pandemic. Uh, I started grinding my teeth. <laughs> yeah, grinder in the front row, nice. Raise those mouth guards in the air, am I right? Uh, it's a little something I do at night night now. I went into the dentist for a root canal and he goes, hey, it looks like you've been grinding your teeth. I was like, all right, what's the next move? This wasn't a decision I made. And he goes, well, it's usually caused by stress. Is there anything you can think of? in the last year or so that may have increased your stress levels? I was like, I mean, are we doing this for real? <laughs> Everything I read, every app that I open on my phone, every conversation that I have, every thought, every dream, I'm in the middle of a root canal, this is the most relaxed I've been in 18 months. So you tell me, doc or dent, I don't know what to call you for short, so. The hardest part is I'm a parent, so I have three kids, and uh, schools were closed. Schools were closed for 13 months. When we got the letter from the school district that they were finally going back to in-person school, I recommitted my life to Christ. <laughs> I was like, you put me through a lot, Lord, but I am back, all right? I actually told my son, I was like, listen, I will take you to school, but someone else is gonna have to come get you, or I'm gonna get a DUI in the pickup line. <laughs> Mom and I are gonna start drinking the second that you leave, all right? Full disclosure, we'll take the DUI. I could use the night away, honestly. <laughs> It's hard. Nobody's talking about how hard the pandemic has been for children. My daughter did her entire first grade year in Zoom school. She's back in in-person school. She's not thriving. That's super hard. The teacher pulled me aside and goes, hey, just want to let you know, your daughter spends a lot of the afternoon crying. <laughs> it's not the punchline. <laughs> and I go, oh yeah, she gets that from her dad, as a matter of fact. <laughs> that is modeled in the home right there. She just started therapy. She has really bad anxiety. And we had this really uh, cute conversation where she pulled me aside. She goes, oh, daddy, did you ever do therapy when you were a kid? I was like, oh, honey. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this, but parenting has changed a lot in one generation. <laughs> therapy, I couldn't tell my dad I was thirsty. <laughs> Let alone communicate an emotional need. <laughs> Like she went in cause she has tics. We didn't have tics when we were kids. We just all had a friend that blinked weird. You understand? <laughs> that went undiagnosed. I didn't know how to talk to her about it. Cause that's not, like we would hide injuries from our parents so we didn't get in trouble. <laughs> I remember one time me and my friend Tommy were playing in the ravine and we were never allowed in the ravine cause in the nineties kids got kidnapped on the regular. That was just a thing that happened back then. I don't know, that was, was on the news all the time. And he fell down and he got a cut and Tommy was freaked out cause he was like, dude, I can't go home. I guess I just live in the ravine now. <laughs> He's like, you gotta stitch me up. I was like, dude, stitch you up. We're in first grade. Like, I can't color in between the lines. I'm not. <laughs> but it's been hard for parents too. Like the, you know, the hardest part about Zoom school was just sitting next to your kids and your kids realizing how dumb you were. <laughs> My son, it was in eighth grade. Like there's not one thing that an eighth grader's learning that I know. <laughs> Not a single thing. He asked me what an integer is, I'm out. I have no idea what an integer is. I got all sweaty. I told him it was a bluish purple color in the rainbow. I don't know. <laughs> the harder one was the first grade daughter though, because I know everything that a first grader knows, but I don't know how to teach it to him. That's the skill of teaching, right? With that first grade, that's a big year. That's when you learn how to read. We're like three weeks in, I was like, you just might not learn this. You might be one of those can't read kids. <laughs> Silver lining though for me over the last two years is that my favorite form of entertainment is Facebook fights and <laughs> <laughs> folks, it's never been a better time to be alive for Facebook fights. People wake up every day and go, I'm gonna tear apart my family today. <laughs> I've had too many friends for too long. This ends today. You ever watch family members fight online? What a gift, an absolute <laughs> blessing. Don't get involved, just enjoy the show, right? Cause it's not about the issue, they just don't like each other. And they have dirt and history, so it gets ugly and personal. I was watching two cousins debate the vaccine and it ended with, you know what? I'm glad you didn't get custody of your kids. <laughs> I was like, this is the best movie I've ever seen right here. <laughs> like. <laughs> Social media is making people more confrontational in person though. People are quick to argue. They're more confrontational. Like a while back I had a dinner uh, with a friend that I grew up with and I hadn't seen him in a long time. He goes, hey buddy, what do you think about guns these days? <laughs> that was his hello. I said, like, come on, man, you know me. I grew up redneck, like we grew up around guns and stuff, but I don't really like guns. They just don't do anything for me. He goes, what about to protect your home? I go, buddy, I'm a millennial. I don't own a home. 
You think I'm gonna be a hero for my landlord? Is that? <laughs> I've been trying to get a new sink from this guy for seven years. I'm not gonna kill on his behalf. I got a packed house that led to a lot of the stress, all right? I'm married, she lives with me. I have three kids and then my dad lives with me. I'm super close to my dad uh, cause I was raised by a single dad and I was raised poor, not fake poor, like legit poor. I hate when people act like they grew up poor but you know them so you know better. They're like, I grew up poor and you're like, you know how to ski. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> But I was raised redneck. I've seen my dad cry two times ever, and both those times involved the Daytona 500. So, it was him in my house and my Uncle Butch. Whatever you just saw when I said Uncle Butch, that's him, right there. Butch had one son, he named him Tater. That's my family. But I found out I'm like my dad in a couple ways. Uh, one, I hate all my kids' friends. Uh, there's two types of dads in the world. One who love all your friends, the nice dad, he's always high-fiving them, he knows their names and their hobbies. He's got like a pocket full of croissants for some reason. Uh, I'm not that dad. I hate all my kids' friends. Like, I, uh, my, my, uh, not, like, a dad will hate your friend for like a petty, nothing reason. My dad hated my best friend, best friend growing up, Gavin, all because Whenever we dropped Gavin off, Gavin couldn't shut the van door all the way. <laughs> that's the it. That's the entirety of that hate report right there. And I used to judge him for that, and now I'm a father, and I'll hate a kid for way less. <laughs> My daughter recently told me she has a friend named Zen. I hate the whole family. I'm out. <laughs> I do love being a dad though. I love being a dad for a lot of reasons, but one is all my kids are jocks and uh, I love going to my kids' sporting events. And the only thing more satisfying than watching your kids at sporting events are watching the kids that are there against their will. <laughs> if you have not had the chance to watch a child be forced into youth sports participation, an absolute blessing from above. <laughs> There's a kid on my son's basketball team named TJ. TJ does not sit on the bench, TJ lays on the bench. <laughs> and whenever they call his number, it's a big dramatic scene. He flops out of the ground, he rolls out to center court, he flips off his parents, I love TJ. <laughs> I can't get enough of this kid. Every time he's in the game, I'm like, yeah! TJ, TJ, I have a foam finger. It's just the middle finger. I love TJ. Because he's a wild card. I don't know what he's gonna do. Like I've seen a million kids make or miss a basket. I have seen one kid bite a ref. <laughs> and that's worth getting up for on a Saturday morning, you know? At the end of last season, his best moment, they tried to have the viral YouTube moment where you know the kid who's not very good gets his first basket of the season, right? So they put him in, everybody knows what's happening. Phones are out, other game stops, all right? Defense clears, they throw it down, and he catches it. Five, four, three. This psychopath <laughs> does not shoot the basketball. He licks the basketball, and then he kicks it into the stands. <laughs> This is the best moment of my life. Cause then he turns and looks at us like that scene from Gladiator, like, are you not entertained? Is this not why you're here? It's like, this is why I'm here, TJ. My kid's not even playing today, so. All right, you guys had a lot of fun. I've been Dustin Nickerson. Thank you so much, everybody.